Welcome back to another Pencil 2D tutorial. In this video, we're going to be exploring the differences between the bitmap layer and the vector layer. So I'm going to go into the bitmap layer, and up until this point, this is what we've been using in the tutorial series. I'm going to go to the pen tool, and I'm just going to make sure I'm on a black color, and I'm just going to create a little triangle here. We'll do a circle, and then using the polyline tool, I'll just left click and create an X and hit enter and we'll just create like an, a sort of X here. Now we're gonna zoom in and look at, at these, uh, what we've created. Because with bitmap, everything is always a collection of pixels. You're basically coloring the pixels to be a certain color and a certain lightness. So we can do red here, we can do blue, but it's always just a collection of pixels. And they sort of fade off into a lighter color. We have really dark black in the middle, and then grays on the outside. And when you zoom out, that kind of creates a nice smooth look and everything looks nice. But when you zoom in, you see it's pixels. Even with the polyline, it's pixels. So it's these squares, and there's only so many of them on the canvas in our animation. Uh, when we use vector in contrast, so if I go down to vector layer and left click to select the vector layer as our active drawing layer, I can use the same tools. We'll use the pen tool, and I can draw a triangle. I can draw a circle, and I'll go to the polyline tool, and I'll draw this left click once hit enter, left click again, and again, and hit enter. And so now if we zoom in here, we see these are going to look a lot different. They have rounded edges, uh, and that's because what Vector is doing is just creating a series of nodes. We can click on the Smudge tool and then select our object, and we can see all of these dots, these gray dots that have been created are, are the nodes, and we can reshape this triangle according to these nodes, and everything stays sort of smooth and it, we, we may get thinner and thicker on the line. Um, we can adjust this however we want to after the fact. Whereas with this one up here, we can't do that. In fact, if we do smudge on this one, I go back to the bitmap layer and we try and smudge this, it's just gonna smudge and blur those pixels because that's all it knows how to do. It doesn't know anything about nodes and so we can't really do anything um, with this. Um, so there's advantage and, advantages and disadvantages to both. Another advantage of vector is once it's drawn, if I go back into the vector layer, we can move these around by just clicking on them. So we can move, and we can even move them over top of each other. So we can move all of these over top of each other like this. And then we can go back and say, oh, we didn't want these here, and we can move them away from each other. With the bitmap, we can't do that. First of all, if we're in the bitmap layer and we just click, we can't click and select it because it's really just a bunch of pixels. We'd have to move one pixel at a time which we can't even really do. And so what we have to do is tell um, Pencil2D, okay, this area, all of these pixels are what we want to move. So we grab the selection tool and then we have to move and we can move this over top of something else. And then we can take this, uh, grab the X over here and then we could move it over. But you're probably gonna notice the problem pretty quick here. So now that we have this, which is what we did down here with the vector, something similar, well, now we can't undo. We can undo it by going Edit Undo, but we can never come in here and click and move these away from each other. These pixels are sort of fused together now. And if we try to select and move away just this X, we're going to accidentally, or not accidentally, but we're going to cut apart our drawing now. We can't, we can't get just the triangle. So if you're working with objects and it's important to you to be able to move around an object, especially on top of each other, um, let's go back into the vector layer, then it's going to be good to work in vector because we can click and move these over top of each other within the same drawing without messing things up too much. Um, but a disadvantage is we can't color. So let's say we uh, move this into here. Um, well, first let's look at the bitmap, how we would do this. We grab the fill tool, and now that all these are interacting with each other, we can use the fill tool, we can select like a uh, an orange red color here and we can fill just this portion in and we can go to a blue color and fill this and so we can create some pretty cool things just at the intersection of these pixels we cannot do that with the vector layer in fact uh, normally we may be able to fill just a single object so we would fill in just the circle but it's uh, select the vector layer it's not really working right now it's still in development but we would grab the fill tool and then change to the color we want and then fill that in. But you see how everything's working now. As we change the color, all the objects are changing with it. So I would say at this point in time, until more development happens on uh, 
the vector layer probably only work, plan on working in one color or if you want to have multiple colors you can always add another vector layer to do that go to this plus sign and just go new vector layer now we have something called vector layer 2 and this one will be able to draw something uh, different and be able to have it be its own different color oh we're, we're reselected on now well, maybe it's changing the color of all of them looks like the layers are tied together now so uh, for coloring, you may have an, an issue with the, with Vector for the time being. Uh, what else? Oh, I want to show you some of the different tools for Vector. So while we're, the tools behave a little bit differently, like the brush tool, for example. Um, it creates this vector line, and if we go to the smudge tool, we learned we can click in here and edit the nodes of this line. So this line is very big right now, but, it, but we can look and see, let me get to the selection mode, the actual line in here, if I can click on it, is just this line right here. And then it has a thicker outline, which our brush tool had this width, so we lower the width down. So the actual line is that blue line there, and then it has sort of a thickness to it, um, which is kind of kind of cool. Um, just be aware that's how that works. Feather is not gonna work. So feather only works in the bitmap layers, not the vector layers, because the vector is just uh, always goes to a certain width beyond the line that you draw, if that makes sense. Uh, what else? Oh, and then there's a, an option here under, um, if we do like the pencil, for example, we can go fill contour. And what that's going to do is whatever color we have selected, uh, when we finish drawing it, it's going to fill it in with that color. So we don't have to actually grab the fill tool. And if we don't even close our shape, it'll still fill it from um, start to finish or from the place you started to the place that you ended. Oh, and let's look here what's happening. So so notice uh, this bitmap layer is on top, and so that's why we're not seeing everything through to here. We're drawing on our vector layer one is where we were drawing, and so uh, but the bitmap layer is above that. So we'd have to click and drag this vector layer above to be able to have that be on top. So we touched on that a little bit in, in past tutorials, but the order that these are in down here makes a difference. Uh, I think I'm going to leave it there. This may have been confusing for you, and it's perfectly okay just to stay in bitmap if you're more comfortable with that. Um, but as you uh, as you get more familiar with Pencil 2D, you're probably going to find some situations, especially where you're wanting to move objects to go on top of each other. You'll find some situations where uh, it's really nice to be able to select an object and either resize it or reshape it or move it without affecting the pixels that are around it. So um, we'll probably touch more on this in future tutorials, but go ahead and play with that and get comfortable and uh, leave your questions and comments below if you have any, and I look forward to catching you in the next video.